135 MPs in the Catalan Parliament have been able to vote today for the first time in half a year, but the Spanish judiciary might prevent it from happening again in the future. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The last time that all Catalan lawmakers were able to vote in the chamber was on October 27th last year, the day of the Declaration of Independence. Later on that day, the Spanish government dissolved the parliament and sacked the government. It wasn't until today that all MPs in prison and abroad were able to vote once more, but two unionist parties are ready to challenge the delegated vote for the representatives abroad. Yet another clash of wills is approaching. We'll get you the latest on this, and in the Catalan News Show today we'll also show you images of a beautiful landscape in case you've got some time off and you'd rather avoid the beach. The Catalan Parliament Bureau gave the green light again today for the MP in Brussels, Tony Comín, to be able to vote in Parliament via a representative. This is relevant because with his vote, the mainstream pro-independence parties will be able to prevail in a potential presidential bid before the deadline to swear in an MP ends on May 22nd. Yet while courts accept the delegated vote of jailed MPs, the judges still haven't had their say over this mechanism for the ones abroad. It looks as if the Spanish judiciary will once more become mixed up with Catalan politics. The Parliament Bureau, headed by Roger Turenne, yesterday allowed an MP abroad, Tony Comín, to take part in the chamber's plenary sessions by delegating his vote. Comín's first proxy vote took place today, and it was the first time that all 135 Catalan lawmakers were able to cast their ballots this term. Yet the Unionist Ciutadans Party and the People's Party announced they will appeal to Spain's constitutional court to overturn Comín's delegated vote, and that of Carlos Puigdemont, who has been using the mechanism for almost a month, and which has gone unchallenged until now. We are absolutely in disagreement that this Parliament gives premiums or privileges to those who jump the laws and to those who run from justice. Ciutadans and Spain's ruling People's Party are unlikely to file their appeals together. In fact, Ciutadans leader Arrimadas accused the Spanish government of inactivity as their rivalry for hegemony of the anti-independence hardline sector is increasingly more evident. Meanwhile, the main pro-independence party, Junts per Catalunya, is still hoping to amend the Catalan presidency law in order to swear in Carlos Puigdemont without him attending the chamber. This move has a gloomy path ahead in the Madrid courts, although the Spanish executive delegate in Catalonia hasn't yet revealed whether his government will take action. What he did claim today is that a nameplate indicating that a square in Girona renamed October the Fair Square, honoring the independence vote held that day, leads to hatred. Está mintiendo, esa placa está mintiendo en cómo explica esos hechos, manipula la realidad, genera odio, alimenta la confrontación, profundiza más todavía en la división social que ya existe. The majority of local councillors in Girona, in northern Catalonia, decided to rename the Constitution Square in February, and around 1,000 people celebrated last week when the nameplate was unveiled. One of the other highlights of the day in the chamber was that the parliamentary committee to oversee Catalan public radio and TV has been launched. This coincided with a complaint registered today in the European Parliament against an alleged partiality of Catalan public media by a former People's Party official. Happening also today in Brussels, a delegation of workers of Spanish public radio and TV denounced what they described as manipulation and censorship in their media. In the Petitions Committee of the Chamber, they also urged the institution in the EU capital to call on Spain to respect impartiality, plurality and independence. The case is now under consideration after being accepted for review two months ago. The pro-independence MEP, Josep Maria Tericabras, commented on both developments, saying that they have nothing in common. Els col·legues de Televisió Espanyola que es queixen del seu cas i que vindran a la Comissió de Peticions el mes vinent expliquen com hi ha pluralitat zero en totes les tertúlies, per exemple. Això no es pot dir ni de ràdio, ni de la ràdio, ni de la televisió catalana. One more day we're going through the judicial cases stemming from last autumn in Catalonia. But the case we tackle today isn't the one against the pro-independence officials, but against the Catalan Trade Union, which organized a big protest last November. It was only a few days after a number of deposed ministers had been sent to prison. A pro-independence union in Catalonia appeared in court today for calling a strike last November. The protest came at a moment of high political tensions. Just a few days before, the Spanish government had suspended self-rule in Catalonia following a declaration of independence, and ministers were deposed and sent to jail. Officially, the union called the protest in response to labor reforms, impoverishment and measures recently passed from Madrid to facilitate companies fleeing Catalonia amid political uncertainty. 
Back in November, courts ruled that the strike could go ahead. But the employers' associations insist. The protest was political, it should have been illegal, and they should be compensated. El que ha quedat acreditat és que la vaga es va convocar en deguda forma i que el fons de la vaga era evidentment, tal com consta en el preavís que es va entregar al Departament de Treball, de motivacions estrictament laborals. Serà molt difícil que el tribunal fallés a favor de foment del treball a la vista del que ha ocorregut a la sala de vistes. This union represents a tiny minority of the workforce in Catalonia, but it got amplified by pro-independence civil society groups, which also called on people to leave work and protest. Roads were blocked and thousands took to the streets. The trial against the union comes amid a string of controversial cases in Spain, namely the prosecution of hip-hop artists for their lyrics. Today, a Catalan rapper received a letter notifying him of a two-year prison sentence. He burnt the documents and listed the names of those also facing prosecution. Robots replacing humans. This is the plot of countless sci-fi stories in cinema and literature. But in reality, in the working world, this might not be that true, at least in the near future. Industry 4.0, or digital industry, will create around 13,000 jobs in Catalonia by 2030. This, according to a report presented today by the Catalan Department of Enterprise and Knowledge. The same paper, though, also warns that 35% of jobs are likely to be automated in the coming decade. This future trend can already be seen at the Amazon Logistics Center in Catalonia, where 3,000 robots work alongside people. The report also claims that the automotive sector is leading this transition to the Industry 4.0. As technology advances the world in which we live, industry is still often pointed at as a major contributor to pollution. To prevent this global concern from getting much bigger, almost every country in the world signed the Paris Agreement on Climate Change in 2016. Barcelona has just presented an initiative to achieve this aim. The Catalan capital aims to reduce its emissions by 45% by 2030 as well. This goal is expected to be met by cutting back the use of private vehicles by 20%, but also by expanding the green areas in the city. Trees in the city's parks could help reduce Barcelona's temperature. A decrease of water consumption and the installation of solar panels are other initiatives announced by the local council. If everyone does their part in this fight against pollution, we will be able to enjoy landscapes as the ones we're about to show you now for a long time to come. As the weather gets nicer, it becomes more and more tempting to take advantage of the sun and go exploring in the mountains. In Catalonia, the Pyrenees are easily accessible, though unfortunately not by all. But in one place, this is already changing. One can find unparalleled beauty in the Catalan Pyrenees, where moving through nature can provide a welcome break from the city and a positive connection with the outdoors. But in reality, this is usually only attainable for able-bodied people. Accessibility for people with disabilities goes beyond urban spaces. Trail heads and hiking routes are usually not thought out for anyone who moves with assistance, leaving a gap in just who can enjoy the Catalan outdoors. But one natural park in the Pyrenees is out to change this. The Parque Natural de l'Alt Pirineu Bordering with friends has adapted a 10-kilometer itinerary to make it accessible for people who use wheelchairs or have reduced mobility. It's called La Guingueta d'Aneu, and it's already been tested with positive results. I clar, poder-la fer amb, amb companys que van a cavall, eh, amb bicicleta o gent que ve caminant, doncs clar, per mi és un luxe. I clar, i per mi i per tota la gent que la fa. There's still work to be done, as it remains difficult for people in non-motorized wheelchairs. This is just the beginning, though, of a space that's worth a visit. Near a reservoir, it's a chance to see various species of birds and animals. It's also ideal for a family stroll and can be beneficial for everyone, even therapeutic, say park directors. Passejar per aquests itineraris envoltats de natura, fauna i flora, al mateix temps que fas esport i gaudeixes la natura, també fas salut. Done with the support of the Obra Social de la Caixa, this is the second trail to have been adapted, and certainly not the last. Now let's talk about another kind of heritage in Catalonia, the historical one. Igualada in central Catalonia has just restored its 19th century fortress. The work has consisted of leaving the building in its original shape and eliminating all the elements added afterwards. The restoration project lasted for two months with an investment of 50,000 euros. The defensive construction was erected on the remains of a chapel in 1837 during the First Carlist War, facing two pretenders for the Spanish throne. 
To finish our show today, we take a look at some more of what Catalonia has to offer visitors and nature lovers. Reservoirs in the Lleida region have started releasing water to make sure there is enough reserves in case of future adverse weather. Have a look at the images and see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.